All right, so I'm gonna do things a little different today. I need to make, sorry, I'm adjusting my camera as we're talking here. I need need to make a journal. I've got all these great pages that I made. And um, so I decided, sorry, I'm bringing this all over. I decided that I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about how I do journals because when I started making journals, I became so overwhelmed because, you know, and I get it. I get it. When people are um, making these things, they, you know, need to give exact measurements because a lot of people are like, how big is that? How long is that? You know, it needs to be five and 16 fourths or whatever. And I just, I can't, I can't do that. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I actually like kind of vibe, kind of vibe it. So uh, what I did, I started working on this and I was like, you know what, I'm going to show people what I do because I kind of, like I said, I, I vibe it and I just kind of go by the seat of my pants. I don't really measure a whole lot. I kind of eyeball a lot of things. So um, this is my my paper size and when I measure it, my, my cutting board here tells me that it is approximately eight by five. So I had all these eight by nine uh, cardboard pieces from old Amazon boxes cut out uh, and then I ended up cutting it down because what I'm gonna do here is a um, grommet binding with some ribbon that I have. And this is gonna be a uh, tab journal. So I pre-cut last night um, a bunch of fabric um, pieces of tape and um, I'm going to use these. I have a bunch of other ones, but these are the ones I kind of feel go best because this is a like a pastel letters and numbers kind of thing. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I have a, I need more room. I have a whole little box here that this is where all of my um, journal. Ooh, we made it. Didn't hit the camera. All my journal making stuff is, and I've kind of got like a little template. I'm going to have to make another one because these are different paper sizes. And then I've just got like a bunch of like tools and stuff in here. I do have grommets. I do have the corners. I am horrible, horrible, horrible at folding the corners on these things. So I bought these corners on Amazon. I'll link to them. These actually are the bigger ones that I found. And I had to buy multiples because I learned the hard way when I first started making these that there's not enough um, corners to do a full journal. So, uh, and then I've got my grommets and I've got hole punches and all kinds of stuff in here. Um, but again, this is all I need. Oh, I bought these little fun things. Like they're these little, here I will show you. Wait, hold on. Oh, here they are. I thought, I thought these were kind of fun. So I bought these little three hole binders and then I just make like these little, little pocket ones. Um, I don't know what for, but I, I just, I wanted to make them. So I did. And um, so yeah, everything is in here. You don't need a whole ton of stuff. I don't use most of these tools, but um, a lot of these are for like, you know, crimping the um, corners and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I do need these tools, the Fiskars things. I'm going to do it, and they're a little scary when you watch it, but um, this this thing is freaking awesome. So I will, I will link to that guy. Oh, I already have a glue thing, but I brought another one. These are uh, magnetic strips. Some of the uh, journals that, well, actually, okay, so one. I haven't really made a lot of journals, but uh, I use this as a magnetic closure. Hold on, I'll go get it. God, you can, it's painfully obvious I don't plan. So this is a, it's a magnetic closure. And inside here, there are actually three levels of um, the closure because I thought, well, I would love to sell this and it is on my Etsy store, so I will sell this. And, um, uh, when people add to the book, it's gonna get thicker. So I wanted to make sure that as this grew here, that this could also accommodate. So yes, magnet. And gosh, my camera seems like super close. I'm gonna like reset some crap and then um, I'll be right back. So I'm gonna go ahead and start 
um, showing you how I do things. By the way, these are like the most dangerous um, weapons of all time. If you use these, please be incredibly careful because they are very, very sharp. Um, and always roll it away from yourself. I, I think I talked about this already, but I was rolling toward myself and it was like as if in slow motion, Burm, 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 burm. And then it was like just kind of stuck in there. It was pretty gross. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just make my covers. So I measured. All right. Also within my box, I've got like this cardboard that's kind of um, taped together because of these guys. The strongest thing ever in the history of strong things. So this is where my grommet hole is going to go. And I've learned... Um, by doing these that uh, you got to make your grommet holes as you go along. Now these things are awesome, but they get clogged. So sorry, 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 sorry. All right, so I'm going to make this the top and this is going to be the outside of my thing. So I'm going to make this the top and then because this is the top and that's the outside, this will be the outside. And this will be the inside. Okay, and this will be the top. Actually, I'm going to also put an L on here so I know this is the cover. I can just write cover. You can do whatever you want on here. Cover, whatever makes sense to you. And this would be back. The reason why I have found this is important is because of this bloom and grommet hole. If you make the grommet hole and then somehow this gets changed around, they don't match up. And I don't know why, physics, someone can probably answer the question, but whatever. Um, and then also these things are so bloom and powerful that I do it on top of a cardboard wrapped up because I don't, you probably can't see it, but there are holes in my self healing mat because this little guy is really strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the first hole. And the way that this works, this has like a metal, poor design. It's a great tool, but this has like this metal piece up here that whenever I use it, cause the, the action is pulling up and pulling down, it it's, was cutting me. So I put tape around it. Um, this is a 3 16th hole, which is um, a standard size hole, uh, hole punch size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it up. Bam, I'm gonna do it a couple times. And it starts going through, so here, I need to do it one more time. Now, it doesn't matter if this kind of gets cracked open a little because I'm gonna be using a grommet. So there's the hole, not perfect. So this is the back cover inside top. Top inside cover goes to back inside cover. So I'm going to get my pen and draw the circle here. And that's where this hole is gonna go. So put it right there. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, come on. All right, now, just for giggles, I'm going to get the grommet and I'm just gonna push it through to make sure that it indeed goes through. Beautiful, goes through. Grommet, come on, goes through. Gorgeous, perfect, wonderful. So the holes are good. Now I can start uh, putting the cover on. So because this is a tab binder, I'm just gonna put the outside cover on first, not the inside cover. And I'll tell you what that means you know, as we, as we go. But these are just, um, these are actually napkins that I got at the thrift store, cheap napkins that I paint as I'm painting the uh, the papers so that I kind of have like a coordinating color on the front. Um, this one's actually the back because it's my least favorite one. So this one is gonna be the front because it's my most favorite one. So what I, this is how I, this is not a tutorial. This is just showing you how, how I do the stuff and things. So this is my outside left cover. So this is my front cover. So I'm gonna work on this one first. And I know it's gonna go something like this. So the way that I do this is I just kind of eyeball it, right? So, oh gosh, I know this 
there, this is this is different for a lot, but I'm just showing you you can be loosey goosey. So I cut off the um, edges first because I know that these edges are not going to be a part of my piece because they make it too bulky. So I'm cutting off the edges first. Get this paper out of the way. And again, I don't really, I don't measure. I don't care if it's straight. I don't, I, cause it's gonna be glued on anyway. So then I kind of uh, will flip it. Ooh. And I save these little guys because when I run out of the fabric tape, I figure I can use these guys as some kind of fabric tape, right? Just use some glue. So I save them. Okay, so this is the outside cover. This is where the hole's gonna be. I'm gonna kind of take a look and figure out what I think. Like, okay, maybe, maybe I want a little bit more yellow. So I think that is what my outside cover is going to be. Awesome. Flip it back over. And because this is where I had it laid, I'm going to mark it because I will inevitably lose my spot. All right. Now I'm gonna take a little bit off the top because I, I know I don't need this much. You only need about an inch or so to wrap down. You can do more, you can do less. It's really a matter of personal preference. When I get off, when I fold this down, then there will be a piece of paper inside of here that will then cover the um, rest of the hole. So we'll get there. So this is fine. This side I could probably use a little bit off. You don't want too much fabric I found because it, uh, it, it gets too bulky. Now I may have only made like three of these into completion, but I've made all together probably like 11 gajillion because I, I did so many prototypes trying to make this work. Um, so I speak from experience. Um, and then what, was always suggested is to cut off these corners. And people do it different ways. Some people go rare, rare, and I just I just go like this because I know that I'm gonna use the um, the cover, corner covers, because I'm really bad at corners anyway. And I'm not gonna spend like a million years, oh, I'm cutting towards myself. Ooh, I hope my husband doesn't see that. When I cut myself, I like ran upstairs and I'm like holding my hand, I'm like I cut myself. He says, well, how bad is it? I'm like, I don't know, I haven't looked yet. So. Uh, he's like, cut away from yourself, cut away from yourself. Um, so I need to be better about that. All right, so I'm just cutting off the corners again. I'm not measuring and to me, I vibe it. I just vibe it. I don't know, when I watch people that measure it, it is not, it is not how I learn, right? It's not how I, I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't resonate with me because when you start throwing out all of these percentages and fractions and being on, you know, this measure to here, it just, it's like, well, that's no fun. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to vibe it. All right. So also a lot of people will put a bunch of glue here and then put it on. I don't, I don't like that because I think that sometimes the glue goes through the fabric and then it gets lumpy and it gets weird feeling. And I just, it's not necessary to me. I am going to um, glue these up. Now, I, I loathe glue. I loathe, I've got, uh, it's really hard to bring everything over. So I've got this glue, this craft glue. And um, it's great glue, but it also makes those like stringy things and I don't like it. So I use the tape runners. Uh, I full on realize that I go through a lot of tape runners, um, but for me, it's worth it. One thing I'm gonna do before, actually, yeah, I'm gonna do this now, is I'm going to take my, I'm gonna make the, the hole in the fabric um, because it's better to, to make it now than try to find it later. So actually, what was I, what did I just do that for? Duh. All right. This is where having the lines comes into play, putting it back where it was supposed to be. And then I'll do this guy here. Make sure you fit there. That's good. All right. 
And then, even if it's not perfect, at least it's giving you a spot to start. Because if you put this cover on, it's kind of hard to find the hole underneath. So this goes through paper, or excuse me, fabric as well. This kind of goes through like, oh, everything. Oh, did I break it? No, okay. I didn't break it. I think this is a new cardboard piece I'm using behind, and I think it's too thick. So I'm going to get a different piece of cardboard. I think I was a bit too, uh, went with a bit too much gusto. It's not needed to be that thick. There we go. See, it wasn't cutting through because it didn't have, oh, see, it made a hole. These little suckers are really strong <sighs> and surprisingly hard to find. It was, it was surprisingly difficult to find. Okay. Cover top outside. Okay. So it is this way. All right. Doobie, doobie, do. Put it back in my corner areas. So I've got the hole in the front. I hope I did it correctly. And now we're going to start just covering it. So I will usually put a, um, I will run the glue. This is a permanent glue runner. So it's a little bit different than like the glue runners you might use for scrapbooking or whatnot. It's permanent glue. Um, these are granted a bit more expensive but to me it's worth it to not have the flipping mess so do i always do top bottom and then i bring in the sides so this is just me i will do the edge here and then i will bring it up nice and taut needs to be taut and this to me is like probably too much um fabric so i'm just going to cut it down a little bit I don't need all that fabric there causing bulk. Do, 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 do. And then I'll put a little bit on this piece here. Okay. Again, paint right here. Get this going in. I wanna be careful not that my fabric doesn't go over the back of this little guy. So I'm going to cut just a little bit more off here. Again, not a tutorial. This is just how I do stuff. All right. One more. I always pull up and take a look at the corner. I can work with that. I can work with that. I don't, I, I mean, corners are just really a pain for me. I don't know why. I don't like them. And the thing is, is if your corner is not like, you know, sharp and fresh and pristine, it makes the whole book look like crap. So that's why I bought, let me show you what these corner things do. That one was new. So you buy these like corners and they just pop right there, right? So it'll go this way. Okay, and then I crimp it down or I put I put a little bit of glue up in the, the edge there and then it just makes the corner look nice and finished. So that's what I do because I'm not good at corners. See, this one's like all funky, but if I put that on it, oh, gorgeous. And they come in like all different kinds. Like I've got these like these little mini ones now these are the first ones I bought and I didn't really realize how small they actually were. Now these work, these work. I, I usually will open them up a little bit. So I've got like a screwdriver to open them up and they, they work and then I can crimp them down. But if I put like a piece of paper behind here and the paper is here, then it becomes too thick. So that's why I went ahead and just bought some of these large ones so that I can use them in a pinch, right? So this is my front cover. It looks like I've got the um, fabric lined up well enough. Let me get one of my grommet dealy whoppers. And this is gonna pop through here. There we go. It has, gets a little fabric caught on it, that's okay. That's what we've got uh, these for craft knives get some of that fabric out of there and there we go now don't put don't put your inside cover on yet 
because we're doing the tab binding and we need to bind these covers on. And I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. So I'm gonna do the other cover and then I'll come back. Another thing that I always do, just to, I just wanna throw this out, as I'm doing the back um, cover, because lining these things up is quite important for the, the grommet and the tie, just making sure that everything is lined up and I notice that I um, have this turned incorrectly. So before, you know, doing all the stuff and things, um, just like check, double check, recheck. So I now have it lined up properly and now I can glue the inside cover and it will match up perfectly with this outside cover. Okay, so I've got my covers done. So there's the front cover and then the back cover. I've got the holes punched here, but don't grommet it yet because we still have to do the inside cover. Now I'm going to cut the inside cover and <clears throat> not glue it down. So I'm gonna just like kind of measure this again. I vibe it, right? So these covers now, they're eight, eight by eight. Wait, how did that happen? I don't know. Covers, eight, eight by eight and a half. All right, eight by eight and a half. And I'm gonna write this down because I'm gonna forget about it in a second. So eight by eight and a half is the whole thing. These aren't quite an inch. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll do, see this is, I hate doing fractions. Seven and three quarter by eight and a quarter. So 7.75 7 by 8.25. All right, that's what I'm gonna cut these papers at. I'm gonna go over to my my, gu my guillotine cutter because I'm also gonna cut the white borders off. I can't stand those white borders. Um, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, I literally went over there to cut and I forgot what the sizes were just from here walking like three steps behind me. Um, so I had to come back and tear it off and bring it with me. That's where we're at. So this matches up. I'm gonna go ahead again. So this is inside cover. So this is the top. I'm gonna make sure that I know that this is the top. And this over here will be the right. And then this is where the hole is. So I'm gonna do that and then bottom. Just because for me, I, I tell you what, I freaking mess stuff up. Oh, you know what? That's gonna be wrong. See, I already messed up. Cause when I flip it, it's not gonna be that way. So I, as long as I know that's the top, all right? This is what we care about. 